find a good place to hide Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we kind of let tonight, there was no sawing, there was no anything on it, it was just moving a log. Um, logs like this are heavy, they can hurt you. Uh, they can, and um, guys who are the lumber mills that actually cut down these, you know, the, um, The, the cutters, you know, they, they, they are, it's one of the most dangerous jobs. And if you ever watch one of these guys work way up in a tree, uh, cutting these logs down and everything else, it's, it's pretty amazing to watch, but it's also dangerous. And <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm at, you know, basically I'm an IT guy, but wanted to show you that it is possible to move. Um, this one's lightened up a little bit. But probably this one, these were in um, 16 some foot lengths. They could weigh easily well over a thousand pounds. This one is still hundreds of pounds. Uh, it's probably, I think this one's about a 24, you know, about a 20, well, it's over 20 inch diameter. Um, <clears throat> but also sometimes on a project like this, free lumber isn't free. And sometimes the 
effort it takes to get it where you can start cutting and milling and everything else takes longer than the actual task itself. It's one of the reasons why we kind of let it run. But that's what I signed up for in this because if a person's willing to do stuff like this, there's ways to turn this into building materials and everything else for almost free. And well, basically, for, well, it's not all free because even though the little electric chainsaw, you're going to run through chains, you're going to run through uh, chainsaw oil. I mean, it's not free, but basically, you know, if you're making a, a 2 by 12 that would have cost you 30 bucks or something like that, you can make it for a dollar. <laughs> so <laughs> the ratio's pretty good in your, fa in your favor. Uh, but um, this log pile is behind my house, and it's a fairly steep area. It's not actually easy to access. Uh, I am, I don't know if you've hit, seen on the website, I'm working on an old army jeep that we're going to use for our, basically our farm vehicle on the, um, the um, on Hewn Hill. It's a steep property to move around and everything else, and I'm going to put a little winch on it so it can help move some of these logs and stuff like that. So we're going to use the jeep to help move logs around, stuff like that. But for right now, this is, you know, you do it by hand. And how if somebody is trying to do something on the budget, like for example, that was a come along I got at the local auto parts store. Um, <laughs> it's not quite single use, but I wouldn't say it's the highest quality one. Uh, I didn't, didn't look where it was manufactured, but um, that one may not have been stateside, just just guessing. Uh, but it's uh, but it will get the job done. And it's also, that stuff's dangerous. It's one of the reasons I was wearing the glasses at night, just because if something comes through, you don't want it to hit your eye. Or, and there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Lots of things can go wrong moving around these logs if you haven't done them before. Gravity goes downhill. All these logs behind me are basically... 16 to 18 foot feet long uh, there is a they're all braced against that tree over there so those are kind of stacked by themselves but they're all braced against this tree so we've tried to work down from the top of the pile so everything we've done so far is stuff we've pulled off the top of the pile so this one is going to go this one is a little over eight feet long these are going to be for Wall boards. This is going to be wall boards for the board and batten. Um, and then we're going to cut this one up because it was in the way. And then we got to start working on uh, flooring. So, and we're probably going to do the flooring out of some of these medium sized ones. Maybe these two, these two, and maybe that one up there, these three. Start on those. Mill this. We'll mill this one up starting tomorrow. And then probably work on those three and try to get enough. Uh, floorboards out of those out of those three to to get the um this will finish up with what we did the the other half of this log into wall into wall boards as well they're over there on the trailer um and we should have enough for oh it'll easily be over one wall so between this log should be enough wall boards and we're doing them a little thicker they're like two inches thick uh, <laughs> more than you would use on a normal board and batten, but anyway. Um, so we will have at least a wall done, uh, at least one of the walls on the cabin done. Maybe maybe as much as half of it, because it's in the small cabin we're going to put um, windows, we're going to put um, a, a door on the front, on the front wall, a, w a window on each side, a window on each end, but there's maybe a, the one end of it where we may put the wood stove. Uh, we may not put a window there, but on the back wall, um, we're gonna do windows, and I think we're probably gonna do a French door because it's such a small structure that the only way to make it not feel so claustrophobic is to kind of open it up. So it's gonna have plenty of windows. Um, and if we do the French doors on it, then it kind of, you can kind of open it up to the back patio area where, you know, basically unless there's really inclement weather, most of your time you're going to be, you know, in and outside and st between stuff like that. So, um, try to make it so it's a quasi, 
inside, outside, living and working area on this first one to try to make it functional. We don't know how well that's going to turn out, but that's our goal. So if we do French doors on the back, uh, a, stand, a door on the front with two windows there, for actual complete wall boards, um, we may be able to get where with this one and that one, we may have about half the wall boards done. Uh, so the idea is uh, then work on those, uh, and these are only eight footers because the walls are only eight feet high. Then these other three logs, those will be for flooring. Uh, we, we'll probably do this kind of random width flooring. So we'll work down through that log. Some of them, some of the boards will probably be six inches wide. Some of them will be a foot. And we'll just kind of random width those and lay it across the, the, the floor joists and um, go with it that way. Um, so I think, you know, they're not going to be exactly six because the point is you just want to, we'll just square off the edge and stack, knack, knock the other one next to it because otherwise you're going to be um, wasting lumber. And the idea is to, to use as, to be as efficient with it as we can. So probably I'm guessing these three logs will probably do the floor. Um, and that one, big one over there, that one we're gonna use for the rest of the wall boards. And then, uh, and roof sheeting. So that'll be the rest of the wall boards in the start with the, you know, the roof sheeting. And then for roof, um, for rafters, We'll probably use one of the smaller logs here. Maybe something, like, that one's kind of a, but anyway, we'll start working down through it. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully over the next month or so, that's, it's gonna take us a while to get the roofing on and all the windows, cause we're gonna make the windows. Uh, we like older style, like uh, New England style cabins and stuff. So these are gonna have, um, <laughs> If, if we can figure out how to make them, I want to make multi-paned windows. So basically six light windows, uh, six light windows, so there'll be a window with six panes on it. Um, so we'll be six panes, you know, we'll have the front door and then an old traditional looking window with six panes on either side. That's the goal. So thanks for joining us tonight. And we wanted to just do one little one on working with stuff like this is just, it takes time. It's a hard, laborious process. It's not easy. Um, yeah, you could, well, by the time we have the Jeep running and we're doing the logging for the, the big log cabin on the property, you know, we'll have a little winch on the Jeep and we'll be, help us drag around some logs and stuff like that. But for right now, to get functional, we don't have that. And, um, you know, and I tried bringing the pick, uh, my old pickup back around here to actually drag one of those logs off the pile wouldn't even wouldn't even budge it it was um it was a four-wheel drive low and all and all and the wheels would just spin it would just sit there and spin um so <laughs> you think these these can be you know in and unless you want to spend even a small like a Kubota or something like that. You can probably drag these logs around, but it's not going to pick it up. I mean, the scoop, you'd have to have, you have to have a, a pretty good sized tractor to do it. Um, and um, the guys that, or the guy that did this and moved these over here, he had a Bobcat, a pretty good sized Bobcat with the, with the hooks on it. And he stacked them here. And how we got this lumber um, was they built right next door to me, this house next to it, they built a brand new 3,300 square foot custom home on this lot next door. So all of these logs are what came off of that lot. So I was able to get all of these logs to build the first, I think I'll be able to get the first couple buildings um, completely out of these. So I was able to get these for free. And the reason I brought that up is that's stuff that's available to anybody even in town there's a lot of you know it's like okay oh, yeah it's easier for you because you live up in the mountains but there's tree work done everywhere and the way we're doing stuff here without a chainsaw mill we're just have lumber just just doing it you can do this anywhere 
And um, yeah, it's easier if you had a neighbor that was, you know, put some logs here. But the point is, is you may have to do a little more scavenging or if you talk to your local tree guy, instead of them, have them cutting them into firewood length, have them leave them in a long enough length so that you can make lumber out of them. Um, and it's not fast, but it's doable. And so that's hopefully what we're going to show with this is to try to show what is what is possible. Um, the basically I have I got the 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 steel um, log roller at the local hardware store. A couple chains. I had to get that one chain additional this morning because I was using a toe strap, a nylon thing. But what you can do with chains is you can make them. If you're working with a come along, you really only have about four feet that you can pull, right? And you have to be able to adjust the length so that you can get your full pull on the winch. And the only really way to do that is with chains. So that's why we went and got the, and they, they work a lot better than the straps. The straps, um, you know, there's a reason the old logging chains is that's the reason they were using them because they work pretty well. And not only that, you can do stuff within, um, <clears throat> If you're trying to adjust your length, like I was here to use the, the come along, um, you can do it within a couple inches. Where if you're trying to use one of the straps, you gotta try to tie it. I mean, it's fine if you're pulling a car or something like that, or a you know, a four wheel drive out of the, out of the ditch, because you're not, it doesn't, but on stuff like this, you need to be able to get your length right on. Like there's a tree that's off camera there that we're using as our anchor, anchor tree. It's a big, like about the same size as this, maybe a little bigger. So that's where we're, our anchor point is. Um, so you need to pull to an anchor point. That's our anchor point. And um, so anyway, that's it for tonight. Um, wanted to show you this. We're gonna start milling this up tomorrow. This will be wall boards. And then we're going on, then we'll move on to floorboards. And so those will work up for floor. We're gonna try to make them um, eyeball them and run them 12 feet long so that way we can go lengthwise on the 10 by 12 um, and just run full length 12 inch board there if I screw up on one I may have to put a couple together but um, or I can use those in other areas I'd like to have it so it's um, a 12 foot run we may do a one crawl hole or opening lid lid opening in the floor to be able to go down to they say we if we eventually put in a, um, a root cellar or something below to uh, kind of the old-fashioned way of doing some um, of storing stuff. The more practical one for this is this is bear country and bears can be very destructive. So if you store food and stuff like that, so basically the idea was is may actually use do. Um, dig out a root cellar later underneath that structure after we get the little brick foundation <coughs> for storage. So if you need to store food, if you need to store something like that, uh, it, it gives you a place that, you know, you can, the old fashioned stuff, potato, you know, just a place to store food that the bears aren't going to get in or will make it more, more bear proof than, you know, if you see now, where we are now, lots of times you'll see the um, metal boxes that sometimes can cost as much as a couple grand for just trash cans and stuff like that. So what we hope to do with the root cellar is create a space that after we get the brick foundation up, that is a bare secure area that we can do for, you know, our labor, so to speak, just for a few, couple hundred bucks maybe that we can have an area where we can store food, store stuff like that that's out of the out of the bear's way. So even though if we, let's say it's during the summertime and you have the little cabin opened up most of the time during the day and stuff, or even, um, well, the idea is to make it for less, um, a little, make stuff a little more bear safe because that's, that's a thing up here. So, um, and if you're down in other areas, if it, to make it, raccoon proof or whatever I mean you know it, it's um, so we'll run 12 foot boards that's the goal if I can get them all if I can 
run the chainsaw cleanly enough to run 12 footers with just maybe one two foot by two foot uh, crawl hole going down to what will eventually be um, the the root cellar and that'll do it for, uh, for us tonight this is Hune. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for the comments and stuff. Had some good ones going farther. We haven't put, um, we started off just on our own website and a little bit of stuff up on my personal Facebook page to start with um, over the next week or so if we can get a little bit better at this. Um, we'll put it up on our, on a, create a YouTube channel, put it up on there so that people, so if people want to watch as a build, in, as a build series or whatever is, and again, to say, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, most of this stuff that I'm doing I, is stuff that I've never done before. I'm just stubborn enough to think that, oh, I can do that. So um, we'll see if we can. Uh, one of the, my favorite stories from history is, is I got to go back and research it, but there was one of the um, early pioneers that went, uh, you know, went out exploring. And when he went out and he built a log cabin and stuff like that, but the interesting thing is when he left, he didn't even take a whole axe. He took just the head of an axe. He took just the head of an axe and put it in his rucksack on his horse. And um, then he whittled down an axe handle and made an axe handle from a branch when he got there. So, you know, there, there's guys that you think about the hours and time they spent is they built houses, like they built log cabins with just an axe. That's it, just an axe. And you know, they would they would split a log so they and the interesting thing is this is um, yeah, there's all the wood, the metal wedges and everything else, but to start off with, they actually made wooden wedges, start a split, um, and basically they were using a wooden mallet to hit a wooden wedge in the crack that they started with an axe. So their floorboards and everything else to start with, if they, they did, if they, if it wasn't just a dirt floor, was floorboards that they split out of a log. They just split it. And um, we'll hopefully do a little better than that, but maybe not much. Um, thanks for joining us. And we will hopefully do this again tomorrow. Have a good night.